Hey, 3DMJers, big announcement to start off with at the top of the show. 3DMJ has just released The Godfather's Guide to Posing as part of the 3DMJ Vault, which is our mostly free online education platform. Some of you may remember that Jeff Alberts previously released this as a PDF format back in like 2014, but since then we've converted it into a full-blown video course with text supplements and detailed diagrams of every single bodybuilding pose. He's also included a downloadable posing practice schedule, along with tips on poise, breathing, transitions, and a whole lot more. And as with all of our other paid courses, you can get pieces of this guide for free at 3dmjvault.com. So go over there, enter your email, learn a bit about posing, and see what this guide has to offer. It's uh, super affordable, and that was intentional, as... Most people wait too damn long to pay attention to this vital part of bodybuilding. Nothing is worse than paying hundreds of dollars to do in-person lessons at the last minute because you didn't learn the basics in time. So please, please, please go to our site and check this out. So, um, and just if you're wondering, yes, obviously it's ideal for male and female bodybuilding competitors, but I think it'd also be useful for classic physique competitors and coaches of all the divisions as well. So again... You can get a free sample of this at 3dmjvault.com. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the show. This is Andrea Valdez, and today I'm talking to Jeff Alberts and Brad Loomis about being an athlete, coach, and parent all at the same time. Some of you listening might not think that this applies to you uh, because you don't have kids, but it's actually a pretty useful discussion for any fitness professional at all. Most personal trainers or coaches end up having to deal with adults who have children at some point. So being aware of the challenges they face can help you develop a better understanding of your clients and their needs, which in turn makes for a much more productive coach-client relationship as a whole. So in this one, we start with um, discussing like the ages, demographics, and sports that Brad and Jeff's kids participate in. And then we talk about how the guy's competitive training and dieting has affected their family, what it's like posing in front of your kids on a bodybuilding stage, whether or not their kids feel pressure to look or eat a certain way, how they deal with their children following them on social media, Um, training their kids, helping their kids lose weight, and a whole bunch more within and throughout all the little discussions that we hope you guys find enlightening. So as always, if you have any feedback or comments on this particular episode, go to 3dmusclejourney.com or to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash team3dmj and leave it under podcast number 79. Please enjoy our episode on parenting as an athlete with Brad Loomis and Jeff Alberts. Uh, Brad, go ahead and start us out with yeah. all your dad's yeah, I, stats. I should probably go first because I've got one. Okay. He's now 15 and five or six days. And how old were we when we had him? So 15 minus 46 or 46 minus 15. What is 31. that? 31, 32, something like that. So, yeah, we were not young parents, but uh, still, you know, Old enough to probably know better that we were getting into a parenthood. When Xander was born, were you already competing in anything? Um, I wasn't really. No, uh-uh, I wasn't really competing in anything. And the, the scary thing is, is I, I cringe when I think about this. I started prep January 1st because New Year's, right? And mm-hmm. he was born January 16th and he was early. He wasn't supposed to be born till March. So Whoa. I was doing my prep. And uh, 16 days into it, he decides I'm ready to come out. <laughs> Good. So yeah, he's he he very much coincided with my my very first you know bodybuilding prep slash adult um, athletic endeavor. So wow. All right, and Jeff, give me your dad's stats. Uh, let's see. My <laughs> son is five now, which is hard to believe. I went by super fast. Um, and my stepdaughter is 13 going on 14. So I was 41 when my son was born. Um, so basically I was 40, 41 when I met Susanna, who's Mm -hmm. my wife now. Um, and she had Carolina, who's at the time was eight. 
Okay. So that was kind of my introductory to dadhood was first with Carolina and then eventually when Ethan was born. When you were 40-ish, 41-ish? 40, 41, yeah. Okay. I'm a, I'm a late starter. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had been competing for a long time. Yeah, that's, yeah, competing for almost 20 years by that time, yeah. Well, because I forget, you never really had an adulthood without competing, and Brad did. Not just competing, but training, or even training since yeah. you were in middle school. Whereas Brad didn't yeah. really start till maybe a year or two before his first prep, which is when Xander mm-hmm. was being born. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then we have, like, super different situations within the kids. So Brad, correct me if I'm wrong, Xander has been in sports for a long time. But go ahead and give me the whole what he does and what he yeah. has done. He's, he's pretty much done sports all of his life, mm-hmm. really. I mean, he doesn't even remember his first year of football, but he was doing soccer three years before that, you know. So he barely remembers soccer and barely remembers his first year of football. So, yeah, he's essentially done sports all of his life. Since he was like, what, five, Uh, six? Yeah, four, four, five, six. Yeah, Uh something like that. Yeah, Because I think his first year of football was six or he was six or seven. Uh And like I said, he barely remembers playing. Like I show him videos of him playing football. And he's like, I don't remember that. <laughs> so, yeah, he's been doing it all his life. I mean, he really, at this point, doesn't know any other, you know, really any other way, which is not too different than a lot of us. But it's just sometimes as we go through, you know, school, some of us get out of it come high school. You know, it depends on which direction you kind of go. And he'll he'll probably be an athlete forever. Okay. When uh, – because – in America, almost every kid plays Little League something. At what mm-hmm. point would you say it got serious? Like when it went from Little League football to like, I want to play in high school, yeah. college, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question because his his early football years were basically because I was the coach. <laughs> so it was kind of, like, oh, dad, I want to do that, you know, and, and, and I'm the coach and his dad. And, you know, it was kind of like a family thing. But then... After three years uh, of coaching, pretty much on my own. I mean, I was the entire, like, organization for our little town. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just frazzled. I was just worn frazzled, you know. And and Jeff probably remembers the day that I, you know, pretty much tapped out and said, I'm done doing this. (laughs) And so we were forced at that point. It was like, okay, if if you want to play football, we're going to have to take you elsewhere, Mm -hmm. you know, in order for – you to do that. And I'm not going to make you do it, son. You know, it's like, I, I, I want you to want to do it. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to frown on you, but if you want to do it, we got to go elsewhere. And he's like, dad, I can't imagine not playing football. It's so, it's so awesome. Football is so freaking awesome. I cannot imagine not playing football. Mm -hmm. And that was when he was 10. And, uh, that was when we started taking him over to Reno traveling, you know, 40 minutes one way, uh, for football practice, you know, pretty much every single day, you know, uh, that's when it got serious. That's when it got serious. And because his, his love and his passion really started to, to come out. Um, and it started overflowing, you know, into areas outside of the sport, you know, that's why I believe that all kids should participate in some form of organized sports because it teaches you work ethic it teaches you team spirit. It teaches you, you know, stick to itness and, and and trying hard. And sure enough, that was the year when he really started to kind of come out of his shell and started to do his homework and, you know, have a desire to um, just try hard because it, it comes back to you. Mm-hmm. And he was very he was rewarded. He was really rewarded that year because we had just gone off of two years of of homeschooling. So really, his only activity was playing football for about four or five years and he got wow. kind of a fat kid and he had to drop he had to drop weight in order to make the team that we wanted him on because i didn't want him on a higher level team just because he was you know heavy i wanted him to play with kids that were roughly his own age and about his same level and so he had to drop like 10 pounds he had to drop from like 130 to to 121 and that was hard freaking work for him and yeah. he had to be hungry and he had to work out hard and and he was he was out of shape and his coach made him run a lot and when he made the team and made the weight 
I remember we're putting up pictures of him side by side because he was certain that he hadn't made a, any significant change to, you know, his body. And he saw the changes between his, his last year of football here and then his first year of football there. Um, and then on top of it, his, his, his first year of football, they kicked ass. His first year of football in Reno, he went from basically winning two games in three seasons here to like, at one point they were undefeated. They were five and zero over there and they made it all the way to the snow bowl. And he was rewarded for all of that hard work. He went to, you know, I mean, I don't even remember how many games they won. It was eight or nine games, something like that. And he just, he had a ball, he had a ball. And that Mm -hmm. was when it got serious. There's like three things I'm going to have to come back and ask you about within all that you just said. Um, (laughs) Girl, I wrote especially down. the snowball, the snowball. <laughs> especially the snowball. Just kidding. Um, okay, so thank you for all that, Brad. Uh, but Jeff, what what about um, Carolina Dad and was Ethan? Falling asleep. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? What are? What are they into right now? Ethan, actually, this Friday is his first soccer practice. Oh my goodness! Oh, uh, so <laughs> He's starting oh. soccer on Friday. Big E. Um, wow. And it's obviously it's not going to be super serious. It's more just to get him to participate it, be around other kids, mm-hmm. um, you know, that type of thing. Um, so that's going to be exciting for me, watching him do his first practice. Um, Carolina has been playing soccer for before I even met her. So she's been doing it for years now. And she's um, she was playing in a league up until she was 12. 12 that was they like here in stockton they have like um like they have a bunch of teams that play amongst each other Mm -hmm. but this team is called stockton storm like they do a little traveling um city to city club team like yeah it's like a yeah kind of like a traveling little club team so she really wanted to get on that team because that's more competitive whereas the other league was just more like quote unquote for fun Mm -hmm. so she wants she wanted to make this team and uh, she tried out, worked hard. She made it. She was super excited. Um, so she, now she's on like this little club team or traveling team. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's been playing that. This is her second or third season now. She just started. Um, she had her first game last Saturday and they won. Um, but she's really serious into that. And I think as parents, my wife and I, we use the soccer for her as a tool. Um Cause she's like, like, like Xander, like that's her passion is soccer. She loves it. Um, so of course it's like, that's a tool for us as parents. Okay. In order to play soccer, you know, your grades got to be good. You got to yeah. keep up on your sh- here at home. You got to keep things clean and be structured and routine. And so it just, it's like a positive thing. It's a, like, like Brad was saying, like, I just think like playing a sport, it just teaches you a lot about work ethic, discipline, structure. I mean, it's all there. I played, uh, sports as a kid myself and i think that's where i got a lot of the things i do now as a bodybuilder i learned playing sport as a kid yeah. so that's kind of where we're at with sports so ethan's just now getting into it we thought about putting them in karate as well and because the way they instruct like they would actually like it's not so much here here here's how to punch or whatever but they would actually teach them life life things like mm-hmm. actually sit the kids down and teach them about life and stuff. So I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. So I think soccer at some point is going to put, uh, have Ethan go into uh, karate, I should say, as well. Okay. Yeah, Eric said the same thing. That he was like, I, that he grew up doing martial arts, but not because, he didn't like it because of the physical stuff that he just like, they did a lot of mental training yeah. or whatever, I suppose. Uh, okay. So let me go back to like one of Brad's things where you said the that snowball. No, that's not <laughs> <laughs> what we really want to know about the snowball. No, um, he had to diet when he was 10. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. To me, that's so crazy. <laughs> so, and that's yeah. coming from someone who grew up in gymnastics and like we had to, we had talks about that sometimes when I was younger, but, um, I guess, man, there's so many things about that, right? A lot of people would frown upon it, saying that you shouldn't make a kid mm-hmm. worry about that. And then we have this whole thing where you are a competitive dieter. <laughs> and so yeah. he's seen you do it. And is, 
And not only that, if he was a little chunky, he's seen his dad really shredded. Is that hard for him emotionally? Does he get upset that he can't do that? Did you make him count macros? Did you, you know, like yeah. so many things about that. Is oh yeah. That's so shoot, crazy. That could be a whole, that could be like a whole <laughs> podcast right there. Right. Yeah. Um, because I mean, yeah, I mean, trust me as, as he got older, you know, now he doesn't have a freaking care in the world. You know, he'll just, he'll run up and down the street with his shirt off and you know, it, it, he, he's, he's, he's a 15 year old kid, you know, and he's a yeah. football player. So He's a big, strong kid, and and so he's certainly not shredded. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as we were growing up, I remember one time vividly, I was getting ready for a competition, I think in 2014 or something like that. We went back to Florida, and we went to the to the pool, and he was like embarrassed to be seen with me because there I am shredded, you know, the whole fitness model abs, chest, delt thing, you know, and he's he was he felt embarrassed to be there, and he didn't even want to take his shirt off, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to say that, you know, um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say that, you know, that was right or wrong. That's not what I told him. I said, you know what, son, that's just, that's just how you're feeling. And I'm not going to tell you that it's, it's right or wrong. You know, the important thing to know is that none of these people care <laughs> <laughs> about any of that. You know, yeah. if anything, they probably barely even you know, are paying attention to us, you know, cause they're into their thing and they're, and they're doing what they're doing. And so your self-consciousness is really just kind of centered around you. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and then even then I says, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, let's not go swimming. Oh, but you know, I want to go swimming dad. And I says, well, would you like me to just go back up to the room and, and you know, you know, your mom and your grandparents can come down. No, 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 that's, that's fine. I says, well, son, you know what? Thank you for sharing that with me, you know, cause that's an honest kid. Yeah. You know, that he, that he was able to share that with me. Some kids, you know, they probably would have just not even gone to the pool. They would have made an excuse or, you know, something to just get out of going down there. But backing up to losing weight for football, you know, that goes to show you how bad he wanted to be on that team and how bad he wanted to play football, you know, that he was understanding that he needed to, that he needed to lose weight. Now, the good thing is, is no, he didn't have to count macros. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't really have to diet per se, but he kind of wanted to, you know, he's seen his dad live this lifestyle. He knows that it's rewarding, you know, because he saw me get my swords and all this kind of stuff, you know? And so he kind of wanted to, and I said, well, son, this is an easy way to do it. Just look at the calories on the back. And by the end of the day, when it all, you add it all up, don't make it go over 1600. Mm-hmm. And it was as easy, as easy as that. I don't even know if he truly did that to be <laughs> honest with you. Uh-huh. But nonetheless, between being aware of what he was eating, and then of course the the training, the workouts that they were doing in Reno, they were grueling. They were making his asthma act up. You know, he almost puked once. Um, you're gonna drop weight when your activity level goes that high. You know, and really the only part that was really really hard from him was the day that they had to make weight. You know, he he couldn't eat. You know, and he had to make sure that he went to the bathroom and peed and did all of that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, he, he, he still made weight and he was rewarded for all that hard work, you know, and that I, I, to me, I think that's one of the most proud years that I've ever seen him, um, participate in sports. Now, were you, uh, were, were you ever worried about what would happen after that? Was I ever worried Okay, son, you made weight. Yep. Now I want to. Now he wants to go eat his face off and feel bad about himself. And like, like did you? You know, ever... not really. Okay, not really, because like I said, I don't even really know if he even tried to to count calories. He may have, you know, um, and it wasn't like you know he was deprived for six weeks or eight weeks or yeah. however long it was that he, to, that he needed to drop that weight. Um, yeah, I wasn't worried at all. And there was really no repercussions from it at all. He just went back to normal, you know. Yeah, and that was the only and, period, like year or two, where he was a little bit overweight, right? Yeah. Because he he's a, a bit he's looks pretty, like you said, a strong 15-year-old now. Like, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Once he made that weight, did he have to maintain it after that for every game? Or was it you make the weight and you're good for the year? You're good for the season now. You made the weight. Yeah, that's a good question because they do make you weigh in before each game. What? Okay, so the you difference have the main- is, is that no. The, the difference is that when they when they when they get their certified weight, they're just in a t-shirt and shorts. 
And so that's really, really the important one. Then after that, they give you a lot of leeway. So first of all, you're in pads. So they automatically add seven pounds. And I mean, Jeff, you know what the gear is, you know, the pads, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the pants, the pleats, you know. And so <laughs> being being the 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 guy with the know-how that I've I've got, you know, we've got mountains of football equipment. We just found the lightest pads that we had <laughs> for the for the way in. You know, and, and so he, he had no trouble making the weight the rest of the year. And plus they go up a pound for growth each week. So if you start out the first game, say you got to weigh 128, the next game, it's 129, the next game, it's 130. So that was really only the real hard way. And was that very, very first certification after that, he was no, really no issues at all. So I'm assuming once all that weight was off because he was practicing every single way, activity level is still decently high that. Even if he did still. eat more, yeah. eat more, it wasn't enough to have him like yeah. gain a bunch of excessive weight. Yeah, exactly. And really, to be honest with you, after that year, he's not having had a weight problem since. Yeah. Yeah, we never really had a problem like that after that. Yeah. So I think I think his his third year of football in Reno because he is so freaking big. Um, and he is so, so strong that he had weight trouble with weight twice, but it wasn't because he was overweight. It's just because he's big. And, um, how tall is he now? I think he's, he's taller than me. He's yeah. five foot, I think he's five foot nine, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's his athletic story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and then too, like. I don't want to say opposite of that, but like a kind of along the lines, like talking dieting and kids. And again, I have like a sensitive spot for this because I grew up in a pixie sport. Right. And I remember, you know, I grew up in leotards, so you can't really hide much. And I had teenage friends that, you know, it was a little weird, uh, but I'm not a parent, but I, I, I remember being worried about that at an early age and how weird that was. Um, it makes me, then, Jeff, think about, like, because Carolina, like you said, she's 13, 12. Yeah. And she's, and she, like you said, is in soccer forever. And I know I haven't seen her in a few months, but she's a pretty thin. Yeah. Right? Um, and she's always been? Yeah, she's always been thin. She's short, but skinny. Like, she <laughs> seems tall, but she's short. But, yeah, she's really thin. <laughs> Um, she takes after her dad. Her dad's a little on the skinnier side. Um, is now being a adolescent girl who you know we, mm. we're not going to pretend that doesn't that how she looks doesn't matter to her. Lord knows mm -hmm. it did to me and all my friends when I was twelve. Um, when she sees you dieting, does she ever ask you about it? Is does she ever want to do it? Is it weird for her? She's gotten more interest in it lately like probably in the last couple of months i'd say like asking me more questions about diet and now she's starting to be a little more like i wouldn't say worried but more concerned with how she's looking appearance wise because mm -hmm. you know she's a teenager now yeah um i actually she wants to be she's like i want to be coached so oh. i'm like you want to be coached I, yeah i want to work out i want you to coach me and i'm like okay so what i want you to do is i want you to go to your dad your real dad. Mm -hmm. And I want you to get permission from him. And then I want you to go to your mom and get permission from her because, you know, 3D muscle journey doesn't work with minors unless we get parental consent. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you're serious. I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. So like, <laughs> like a month went by and she's like, I was waiting for her to say something to me about it again. And you know, about a month ago, she goes, I'm, I'm ready. And I'm like, did you ask your dad? She's like, no. I'm like, <laughs> We're not starting until you ask your parents. Yeah. So she texted him. She's like, how do I want to start? So he gave her the approval. So I actually gave her one training session so far. Uh, when was that? Last week. Okay. That last was week. on Monday or, <coughs> Monday or Wednesday. So. And why does she yeah, that? She's, or did she say? She wants quads. She said, I want quads. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want quads. You know, because she's in soccer. Oh, wow. Like, I want the quads. I want the legs, the quads. You know, and I'm like... Okay, so we, we have to, you know, we're going to squat then. We're going to have to teach you to deadlift. I go, because those are the bread and butters. You know, get your oh. you get your quads and your glutes. She's like, 
I don't want a butt. I just want quads. I go, well, that's going to look, your symmetry is going to look way off if you have these big quads and, and, and no glutes. And she started laughing. Um, but yeah, she's getting a little bit more uh, thoughtful of how she's looking. So, yeah. I've seen that's like, so weird. Like a normal, I don't, I can't remember being that age though. Cause like, well, I, but, I'm like, did I even know what quads were when I was 12? Like, I don't, anyways. I, I don't like, I don't go around like to me. It's like I, I, I really make it a point not to. I don't talk about bodybuilding. Like if it's our family time, I'm not talking about. Hey, check out my quads. You know, I'm not talking <laughs> like that. <laughs> like, it's always kind of made a point. Like this is my job. Right. And like the, I remember the first time uh, we did a guest pose. You know, it was actually Berto and I when we guest posed at the Battle of the Bay. That was the first time that she was going to get to see her. You know, Carolina and her mom are going to see me on stage. Um, Ethan was, gosh, I think he was a baby. I don't even think he was there. I think he was with grandma or something. Uh -huh. Or he might have been there. I can't remember. But he was too young to really comprehend what was going on. Yeah. So I'm like, that's going to be like, okay, she's going to see me in my, my Speedos. Because I don't go around the house in my <laughs> posing trunks, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, well, why not? Like, okay, she's going to see you, right? It's like, that's not appropriate. There's a time and place. So right. explain to her, like, I'm going to, this is what I do. This is. You know, if you want to call it a sport, I like I can just call it a sport because that's yeah. how I want her to view it. Is like this is what you do soccer, I do bodybuilding. Yeah. I go this so this is this is my thing. Like you have soccer, so that's how I explained it to her. This is my thing. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. And she thought it was cool because um, it was like you know once the once the show was over with, she got to go backstage. She got the you know all the people you know hey you did great up there. She got to witness all these people kind of doing like praising me, and not to toot my own horn, but yeah. It was like a don't special thing yeah. for her. <laughs> so she could kind of see like why I work out, why I diet, why I do all these things that seem maybe a little restrictive, you know, like mm -hmm. in her eyes, I could just imagine her being like, man, this guy, he doesn't, he's following this, this special diet. He's, he's working out hard. He's doing all this. What for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's got muscles, but she actually got to see the performance, see why I do what I do. I mean, how it affected other people. And I think for her, so for her working out, it's like, it's, yeah, it's, yeah she wants quads, but I think she, she gets it a little bit more in depth already at a young age. Like, okay, we're going to, we're going to train, we're going to get quads, but I also explained to her, okay, this is going to make you a better soccer player. Yeah. So there's a performance aspect too that I, that I'm teaching to her as well. And she's seen like the, the good things that come out of the bodybuilding it's not just like the oh i'm training to be on instagram you know mm -hmm. that was going to be the next thing i asked y'all is um i you know that's cool that your kids do sports and they think your sport is cool but as a adult right you you worry or i think one would worry about um the message that it sends, right? And because we are a business and we are an online business, so we have social media accounts and it's our uh, mission and responsibility to help people. Uh, we are arguably, depending on who you ask, a little bit famous, right? And what is that like for your kids? Um, Brad, if you want to start there, you have a 15-year-old who's lifting weights, plays, you know, and he does it mainly for football, but if he's looking different and he has the internet and he has friends at school, mm -hmm. what do they think about what you do? And does he ever ask you questions about it or get embarrassed about what you do or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, th that's the cool thing about our sport is that it, and I think Berto said this a couple podcasts ago, it kind of makes us a little bit more hip. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> let's face it, you know, with, with, with the, the, the way that society is today, everybody should look like a superhero, you know, and it's really cool to look like Thor and like Captain America and Spider-Man, you know, right? So all of his, all, all of Xander's friends, um, and, he, and even to a certain extent, even like the wife's friends on her football team, you know, in Reno, um, they, they kind of they kind of look up to me like that cool guy, you know, because I kind of fit that image, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that makes me feel good because obviously, you know, let's face it, parents 
I think when they go to high schools with their kids, they might feel a little bit awkward, you know, um, it's, it's, it's an awkward environment anyway. Mm-hmm. And when the kids are a little bit more inviting and, you know, and they say, Hey, Mr. Loomis, you know, or Hey, coach Loomis or coach Brad or whatever, you know, it makes me feel a little bit better, you know? Um, but getting back to your original question, you know, what, what is, has, has Xander thought about that? And what, do, what do the friends think about that? I think that's the biggest thing is that it makes me a little bit more, um, just cool, the cool dad, you know, I guess you might say. Yeah. And, and so a lot of times, you know, they'll just kind of talk to me when they might not, you know, talk to so-and-so's dad. They might just say, oh, that's, you know, so-and-so's dad. And so I think that's, I, I like that. I like it when I'm approachable, you know. Um, Does he like Xander, it? Yeah. Exa- exactly. I don't know. I don't really know. I think he does. You know, I think he does. He hasn't really said anything one way or the other. Um, I think that sometimes Xander is kind of looked at by his friends as kind of a leader in his sport and in weightlifting and in kind of all things, you know, I guess in sport, just because I'm his dad and I'm the coach and, and they see what he does and he knows that what he does is by my programming and my design and, you know, of big pictures and, and things like that. Um, so I think that makes him feel kind of cool, you know, but at the same time, I'm sure that there's kids. In fact, I know that there's kids that kind of challenge him. You know what I mean? It's like, well, you do that because your dad says to do it, but we want to do this because it's more cool. Yeah. We know you can deadlift and that's cool and all, but we want to snatch. You know, or we want to, <laughs> we yeah. want a power clean, or we want to push the sled, or we want to, you know, flip the tires or whatever, because that's just that's just more cool. So I think that's kind of a a, a, um, a two sided act. You know, they think he's cool, they kind of look up to him and they respect him, but at the same time, they kind of want to challenge him at the same time. You know, um, wow, I talked for a long time. There. That's Sorry. okay. Did what I, about um? <laughs> yeah, touch on everything. <laughs> other than school, though, like does like Xander has Instagram and his friends do and whatever. Mm-hmm. And does he? I'm sure he follows you and like what do, do his friends follow you and do you ever? Is he ever like, Dad, why did you post that? Or that mean? I'm just wondering. No. Okay. No, nothing really like that. Nothing really like that. You know, I, I think in fact, if anything, they're they're probably more in awe of you guys and your followers and kind of your Insta fame. And they wonder why I'm not, (laughs) you know, so that that's probably more so than anything. What, uh, uh, is probably the case, but, uh, you know, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe if I did have more followers, maybe I wouldn't be as approachable because like I said, right now I I feel pretty approachable. They like coming to me and they like talking to me. And I I think that's a cool thing. It makes me feel good. Cool. Um, what about you, Jeff? So, like, obviously, Ethan doesn't have Instagram because he's five, but he's on your Instagram nah. all the time, and he's, he's on. Ham. He's on. He's getting better. He, he is, but he's starting to he's starting to not always like the camera. Really? Okay. So, yeah, like he like he just kind of like will turn or he won't smile or something. So I, I try to respect that now oh. and not shove it down and down him as much. Okay. So there's just like if he's in a great mood, he's 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 ready for it. I'll do it. But lately, if not, I'm just like, okay, I won't push the issue. I'm like, um, yeah, I don't want, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to, f- <laughs> right? <laughs> Sometimes he wants to, but usually he doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> I I don't want to, I don't want to force social media on him. You know, he's right. only five. <laughs> right. um, Car- Carolina is a different scenario because being she's a girl. Right. And my sport, you know, bodybuilding, you know, like posting pictures in your speedos or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like I didn't like in the beginning, I kind of I didn't want her connected to me, basically. So I didn't like she had the Instagram and the Facebook, but I didn't wasn't friends with her on it on mm-hmm. purpose because I didn't want her exposed to that at a young, younger age. But now she's like we're connected and. She th- it's like for her, it's like she had one picture on her Instagram. She had maybe like four or five posts, but one of them was me. Not even her own dad. It was just me without a shirt flexing. <laughs> so I think she was like, hey, this is my stepdad. You know, it's like, <laughs> kind of like the cool thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So like at the kids at school, like she won't tell me, hey, what you do is cool or whatever. She she doesn't ever say anything like that. 
but I'll hear her sometimes tell her friends like, yeah, that's my stepdad. He's a bi- pro bodybuilder. Yeah. So there's a pride thing there. So that's how I know she's okay with it. Yeah. Um, but the, the social media thing, it's, you can't hide or shield the, your kids from it because they're going to get to it anyways. Yeah. So I just try to make sure that, you know, there's good etiquette and she's handling it responsibly. And it's not like, yeah, I'm posting bodybuilding stuff, but I'm not like, they're not indecent, you know? Right. It's more like, this is more respectful and it's more appropriate than ones I'm, for her or for just me and my personality. Like, I'm yeah. not one that's going to flaunt. It's just more of, hey, here's here's this. And I usually write a blurb on it. It's usually something that I can try to help people with. It's educational or informative or I'm just saying how I truly feel. And to me, it's like whenever I do post, I know that, okay, five years from now, 10 years from now, if my kids read this, they're going to be like, they're going to learn something from who I am, what I stand for, and what I'm trying to teach people as well as teach them. So I have no like regret on, on any stuff that I've been posting. I, if I can tell you this, if I had kids when I was in my 20s, Maybe even my early 30s. I wasn't mature enough mm. to have kids. And I knew that in my 20s because I was an obsessive bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. And I remember telling my ex-wife, if she wanted kids, I'm like, nope, nope. Yeah. It was just, I knew I was just way too selfish to do it. Yeah. Um, that was the only smart thing I did. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. I was, <laughs> was like, but I was telling you, it's like, if I would have had, like, social media was around, but I was in my 20s. It, I would right now be probably deleting everything because I would have been like, oh, my gosh, why did I do that? Why? My kids are going to see this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I so with social media. I'm really aware of that, how it reflects my family, how it reflects my kids, how it reflects um, my my parents, how it reflects you guys and just the sport in general. And also probably most importantly, me and my my value, what I stand for. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point, because that's something that I'm, I, I'm going to say that's something that I've been very aware of for like the better part of 10 years now. <laughs> and yes, part of it is is being part of Team 3DMJ. Um, yes, part of it is, is, you know, trying to represent our sport well. But man, I, I have to tell you that each time that I post something, or even if I'm going to comment on somebody else's picture, post, whatever, um, I'm kind of always thinking in the back of my mind, what kind of an example am I setting to my son, you know, and my son's friends, you know, Mm -hmm. um, they are, it's such an, an, an impressionable age. And it's kind of like, you know, um, Jeff and I, when we were in our twenties, you know, um, that's the last thing that we want to do is, is, is make that kind of an, of an example for you know our kids and 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 especially when they're at this age when so much of their um you know just their 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 lifestyle habits their their morals their you know um their standards are are, are sometimes formed at this age you know yeah brad do you ever worry that because xander's been in sports so long and his whole life you've also been in sports do you ever worry that if he ever wanted to stop or quit or whatever, that he would like that he would maybe overextend himself because he's trying to keep up with you or impress you? Um, I've never thought about that, you know, really, to be honest with you. Um, I think I have worried like, and, and it just a little bit, and I'll kind of reiterate why I I, I have kind of worried, you know, what it's it's going to be like um, if he's not an athlete, or what life's going to be like after sports, yeah. you know. And um, you know, we're, we're we're in a pretty unique situation because we can be bodybuilders and, and powerlifters for as long as we really want to. You know, there's it's not like football where you know, you're kind of in your prime from about 18 until about 26. And then you probably better think about giving it up, you know? So he kind of knows that he's going to be able to perform in or participate in some athletic endeavor in some way, shape or form for as long as that he wants to, you know? Um, and yeah, I don't, 
he's kind of his own man in a way. And I don't see him thinking or even having the desire to keep up with his old man. And maybe that's probably because right now we both know that he's going to kick his man's his old man's ass probably in about five, five or six years. So he doesn't even have to worry about that. Um, but then at the same time, you know, he's got such a good head on his shoulders. And I, yes, probably part of it's sports, but really, to be honest with you, I think the majority of it's just our faith. You know, okay. we're all going to be okay. God <laughs> got us all. You know, and 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 no matter what our our thinking is, if it's clouded, if it's fogged, whatever, you know, as long as we kind of follow that path, we're making right decisions, and we're 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 you know, it, it all comes out for a reason. There's a reason you don't lie. Bad shit becomes of it. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. so as long as you kind of make that your foundation, you're going to be okay, and good shit's going to come out of it. So, <laughs> good, good shit. Um. Good shit and shit and snowballs. All right. Good, good shit and snowballs. Uh, so, okay, the snowball. What is the snowball? Okay. They always play the championship games in like November. And here in, in Reno and Portola, there's oftentimes snow on the ground. So, a lot of times they end up playing in the snow. So, that's why it's the snowball. It's got nothing to do with <laughs> whatever other, you know, jargon or slang that snow is used for. <laughs> I, I just thought it was. I thought it was cute. That's all. That's cute. all. Uh, Jeff, what would you do if, um, say, when Carolina? Oh, see, it's hard because I think it's interesting that you said, "Well, go ask your parents before I'll coach you in any way." But like, say, mm-hmm. say when Ethan is Xander's age. I know Xander's focused on football, but say if when Ethan's fifteen and he says, "Dad, I want to do bodybuilding." What do you do? Have you thought I about it? Probably not really, because I'm I'm like I want him to do whatever he wants and wants to do. I'm trying to encourage him to do what he wants to do. Of course, at this young age, I'm trying to have him try new things so he can actually experience it, whether he does like it or not. So that's why he's playing soccer. It's not like he said, "Hey, hey, Dad, Mom, I'm gonna play soccer." It's five. He doesn't know. He's like, <laughs> "Yeah," but we're gonna put him in, see how how he does and how he likes it. Um, but I mean, if he came to me at 15 and said, Hey, I really want to do bodybuilding. I just, I really want to try and do it. Then of course I'm going to coach him and teach him with the values that I have. Right. The values that I have, like when I was like from 38 on, not prior to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think if I can, obviously if I can get a hold of someone who's younger then I can have them avoid a lot of the, you know, the darker side of the sport that it offers, you know, the dark, the dark shit that we've often talked about in this podcast that we try to help people avoid or, or get through. So to me, it's like, if I get a hold of them at 15, that's more power to him and me. Even if you um, wanted to diet, like if you wanted to get on stage at 16 and not like I want to start nah, getting dragged. I would, I would discourage that. Okay. I would probably try to discourage that. And for for the right reasons, like, hey, you know, you, we haven't even built a base yet. We need to put some muscle on first. Yeah. I don't want you worrying about your diet at 15 years old. Right. Um, yeah, and it's interesting I, because I, Xander, you know, it's like, it's a young, like, like 15. Go ahead, Jeff. I'll say that's just a, you're too young of a age, in my opinion, to even worry about dieting. You should be worrying about your homework, not diet, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and I totally agree. I totally agree. Because trust me, Xander's got a good friend that plays on his football team that's got a damn good physique. And I mean, it's not anything that this kid's done. He would have had a good physique whether he played football and lifted weights or not. It just so happens that he lifts weights. Mm -hmm. So naturally, Xander, who is like, you know, the second strongest kid in the school, um, looks to his his buddy and says, I want to look like that. I want to have abs. Mm -hmm. I want to shred. I want to, he, and he says that he'll actually say that he'll like, and he looks down and goes, I want to shred this. And just like Jeff, I'm like, uh, son, you don't want to do that. (laughs) These are your prime muscle building years, you know, and, uh, I'm the same way. I discourage it. I I pretty much discourage it. Well, the, the, the beauty of that is if that conversation came up for me, all I have to do is show them my pictures from when I first started to when I was 17. I looked like a man child at 17, and I didn't worry about my diet. All I mm-hmm. did was train train hard. 
Yeah, yeah but not and everybody's was... as lucky as you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> for I real, not hard. every 17-year-old. Um, you know. I can only... I like not only like yeah, I was probably pound for pound the strongest kid in my high school. Yeah. But I had probably the best. I had I wouldn't say probably, uh, and I don't want to sound conceited, but I had probably the hard, the most work ethic in the gym than anybody, hands down. So I mean, if even if Ethan had three fourths of that or half of that, and he's just mm-hmm. training consistently, you're gonna make progress without mm-hmm. even stressing the diet. I mean, yeah. unless he's like f- just way under eating, which I don't see that happening. I mean, I was only eating at that time. I remember maybe two meals a day. And I remember Giant lunch would be ones. like, <laughs> no, like at lunch at, in high school, I would eat like a cookie and French fries. That oh was like God. lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then dinner, like I get home, have a bowl of cereal or something. And then I had like, well, cause at the time I lived with my aunt and uncle, my aunt would cook dinner and I'd have dinner. Yeah. That was it. And I would say I wasn't eating a ton of food, just enough to, to – and I didn't gain a bunch of weight. You know, I basically maybe gained 10 pounds throughout high school. But it was 10 real good pounds. Like, it was oh, there yeah. was quite a bit of muscle there. So and it, so to me, it's just like when I think back now, like, like from the age I'm at now, and I think back like 30 years ago, man, yeah, it's like kind of like Eric said. Hey, you don't have to force feed muscle. I'm like mm-hmm. you just have to train at that age and just just eat enough and you'll be fine you'll make you make progress so to me it makes no sense to say okay ethan we got to start tracking our macros at 15 years old I, I need to know what your protein is you know we need to we need to um, you know slowly walk our calories up and get you know let's gain and then when we get four months from now we'll do a mini cut and all this bullshit no we're just gonna trade and you're gonna have fun yeah. in the gym and you're not going to overanalyze this shit at such a young age. And you're going to see you're going to progress without all that worry. Mm-hmm. And then when he's more mature and he's you know further along in the world, then then maybe we can we could worry about the little fine things later. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's funny, too, because this conversation takes me back to one of my very, very first clients that I coached in bodybuilding. And it was way back in like 2004. I met this young man who was 14 years old. And he really wanted to get into bodybuilding. And so I, I, I basically took him under my wing and we trained him for like, I, I want to say a solid like 14, 15 months. And he was training with me the whole time. And then he saw me get up on stage for the first time my first year. And he wanted to do it. And so instantly I was like, yeah, but let's do it. Let's go for it. You know, and at this point he had just turned 15 and he, he, he put on a lot of muscle you know, but I was like, yeah, but let's go for it. You know, who, who am I to deny you this, this thing that you want to do, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, I mean, this is not the first time, obviously, that I think back to that and regret it, you know? Yeah. And it's funny cause I still see him to this day. He's obviously a lot older now. Uh, he's in, he's a, a paramedic. So I see him at the hospital where I work at mm-hmm. and there's no ill will. I mean, if anything, we have a great time when we're together and it's almost like no time has passed at all. But if I could go back in time to 2003, I would treat him the same way that I am treating Xander and the way that Jeff will treat Ethan when Ethan is their age 10 years from now. And I'd say, eh, it's not a good idea, bud. You know, in fact, really, I don't even think there should be teenage divisions in bodybuilding. Yeah. But don't get me started on that because then I'll get <laughs> going on a rant. So. <laughs> okay. So another thing people maybe maybe not listeners to the podcast, I'm sure maybe a couple, but uh, a common argument if you polled like any of the parents at Xander's high school, right, would be should he even, like when did he start lifting weights and was that too early and is that bad for him? Like when did y'all start lifting? Mm-hmm. Xander started, I mean, I didn't have him doing bodybuilding type stuff, but he's been he's been in a gym his whole life, you know, we were taking him down there and putting him in the crib while, you know, I was training oh, yeah, clients. Yeah, because you own the gym. Treadville, you know. He's been in the gym all of his life. So, I mean, he was lifting, doing things like deadlifts, or I guess rack pulls, or probably because he was so tiny, you know, since he was eight, you know. Okay. And, yeah, I always got comments on my Facebook and on my YouTube. Oh, he's going to stunt his growth, you know, mm-hmm. and he's going he's gonna, to, you know, damage himself in some way, shape, or form and, if Eric were here, I'm sure that he could probably, you know, vouch for me that that has never been proven. 
Mm-hmm. The kid's 5'9", 195 pounds. I don't think we stunted his growth, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's pretty safe to say that even starting when he did at eight, just doing deadlifting and, and like, you know, pull downs and things like that and leg presses, he was fine. I would not have him do bodybuilding stuff. You know, I wouldn't have him do curls and leg extensions and, you know, bodybuilding type exercises. Just have fun with it. Just play with it. Learn how to how to lift the right way. Um, but I, I mean, I would discourage it just because I don't think that you need to be that anal obsessive when you're eight, nine, ten years old. Right. But if you wanted to, would you let him? Um, maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, like, I, don't, I don't think that there's any scientific reason why you wouldn't. I don't think they can slip a growth plate doing a curl. Um, but it's more what know, it maybe. stands for. Like, I want yeah. bigger biceps. It, it, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And, and I just I just think his, his time is more well spent doing more um, exercises that would be tuned for sports like soccer, baseball, mm-hmm. football, you know. Is there really that much use in doing bicep curls when you're playing soccer or baseball? <laughs> well, no, I think yeah. you're better well spent in pull-ups you know well and like like jeff with carolina saying i want bigger quads she didn't say i want legs for the soccer field she said i want bigger quads so bigger quads yeah Yeah. so that's why i had to kind of talk to her about the the performance side of it you know (laughs) yeah because i mean that that's a direct like cosmetic thing and yeah and it's funny too how people get so irritated about that or they think it's wrong or that you know maybe you know, how could she, um, what's the word? I was in a podcast with Lawrence on SBS and he was like with some social scientists and they use the word dismembered, but they mean it like you're, you're taking a body part, um, and focusing on this thing, you know, instead of like, I want my legs to do better for soccer. You're like, I want this thing to get bigger. And is that a healthy way to think about shit or whatever? But it's like kind of the same as like if a girl wants like that well, dress at that store at the mall. Like it's kind of the same. Exactly, thing. <laughs> exactly. And also, my thought is, I rather her say, "I want big, bigger quads, Jeff," or instead of, "Hey, I want to go do that drug," or "Hey, I yeah. want to go do alcohol." Yeah. So to me, it's like if I, "Hey, you want big quads?" and and weight training, I mean, boost confidence, boost mm-hmm. performance. I mean, it makes you feel good about yourself. It has purpose. Hey, I'm all for it. So for those people who want to say, oh, she's she's so worried about her quads, like, okay. You know, there's a lot of other things that I think I can really think about that would be a far worse thing <laughs> yeah. than her worrying about her quads. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, That's a good point. Well, it's like, like, it's I, like braces. I, but, like I want straight teeth at the age of 12 or whatever. And so... Uh, yeah, it's just out of sense. If you go back to social media thing too, like let's say I post a picture in my my I don't know, my posing trunks, and someone's like, "How could you post that when your kids, you have a thirteen year old stepdaughter and a five year old son, they're going to see that?" Mm-hmm. It's no different than than and like I wrote an article on a blog on our website a few years back about this. It's no different than if a painter paints a painting puts it in a gallery, then everybody goes and looks at his painting. What's the difference? My physique is my my artwork. Yeah. Canvas. That's, how, that's my canvas. And that's how I teach it to my kids. That's how it's perceived. Like again, it's a sport. So to me it's no different than someone posting up, you know, the drawing their candy, or their candy crush shit and bragging about how many points they get or whatever. It's the same shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well and it, it also it also influences my decision to be a natural lifter, you know, because mm-hmm. we are we are we're we're influencing our kids, you know, and we're influencing their friends and in, in in this young population. So what's it just like Jeff said, you know, Carolina wants bigger quads because that's kind of what she sees, you know, and that's kind of not a bad thing. Well, let's look at the flip side of that. Let's say that I was doing steroids. And then, of course, that's what my son sees, you know. And so then, therefore, maybe my son wants to do steroids, too, you know. A lot of times our our, our kids and, and their their friends kind of see what we do. And, they, of course, they want to kind of follow suit, whether it's good or it's bad, 
you know, because I can guarantee you there's probably a lot of kids that are out there that are watching parents, you know, aunts, uncles do bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And what do they want to do? You know, they want to do what they're seeing. And so if it's bad, they're going to want to do bad stuff. Yeah, Yeah, it's kind of like. I'm not going to say too much detail here because this is more of a personal story that I don't want to upset anybody else. But my little brother, I was getting ready. He wanted to compete in a bodybuilding show and he was 20 in his early 20s. So he wasn't a child. He was in his early 20s. It was in when I was going in 2009. I was competing in 2009 that year and he started prepping. And so I started teaching him how to use the food scale and all these things. Um, and my dad didn't like the fact that he was like, it seemed obsessive to my dad for to have my little brother focusing so hard on this one thing. But at the time he really had no direction, like wasn't really working, wasn't going to school. So I'm like, okay, bodybuilding, doing a prep. I mean, it's going to teach him worth that work ethic. It's going to teach him discipline. It's going to teach him some skills that maybe will help him cope in the real world. Yeah. So I thought it was, I thought it was a positive thing, but my dad kind of saw it as an obsessive thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was telling me, Hey, you need to stop. You know, you tell him like, you shouldn't be doing this and blah, blah. And, you know, long story short, you know, he didn't really go through with it, kind of quit. And, and now in life, he's really having a, he's, he's struggling really hard. Yeah. So to me, it's like, sometimes a sport, it can come across as kind of not good, but mm-hmm. in a way it teaches a lot. So, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's one thing that I think, you know, there's a lot of positives because I know there's a lot of there's sides to the Bible that's kind of ugly. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's like I know for me personally, when I was going through my divorce, it was actually something that was a positive in my life that I can gravitate towards that keep me afloat. Yeah. What's funny or that reminds me of something that Eric had said in one of our first podcasts. It was a long time ago, um, but I hadn't really thought about that. Like with people, usually females who have eating disorders. Um, maybe they're anorexic and, and afraid to eat for whatever reason, or maybe afraid's not the word, whatever reason they have anorexia nervosa and they find bodybuilding, which is a very, like you said, calculated, obsessive way to control their nutrition, but that's the only way that they all gain weight is because they still have control. And it's mm-hmm. that obsessive control keeps them at a healthy body weight, whereas just being like, I can't eat makes them, you know, malnourished and, and underweight. So it's, it's always, uh, like you said, it, it's just where you're coming from. So if he had yeah. nothing else that he could tangibly hold on to, and there's just one thing that he could, like, could that have helped him? Whereas a lot of other kids, maybe there's a lot of, um, like you say, other things they could be doing other than bodybuilding that could be a lot worse. But yeah, to a lot of people, bodybuilding is the worst. So it, I guess mm-hmm. it's where you come from. Um, Jeff, do you remember me asking what Susanna, so Carolina's mom, thought whenever, or if she even cared when when Carolina wanted to work out with you and said, "I want bigger quads." Like, was that alarming no, to her? Care. She didn't care at all. No. Okay. No, because to I think she trusts me like that. I'm gonna show her. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, not not is she you're scared like, like, of what you're gonna do, but like, is she worried that like, why does my daughter care about this? Like, what what is she? You know, is she just looking no. at bodybuilders on Instagram? No, because be like because once she says it, it's not like she's serious. It's more like I want quads, and she'll giggle. You know, it's not like yeah. I want quads because I'm worried about these people how they view me, or or you know, it's more like I want quads because I think it looks cool. Yeah. Where, and then would, would it be like, different? I want abs too. I want abs, quads and abs. Yeah. I was going to say, would what it be I different to, if she said, I want I glutes? To, what was that? Would it be different if she said, I want glutes? For real, yeah, would it be I different? Mean, maybe like, <laughs> depending, depending on the context and how she said it. Yeah. Huh, 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 huh. But she wants the funny. abs too. How what do I do to get the abs? And I'm like, and she's like blowing her air out trying to show me her abs, which she does have a little, a little bit of abs. I'm like, they're already there. Don't even worry about it. You don't need to diet. We, you need to eat. You know, we need to make yeah. sure you play. Yeah. But it's not. She's not super obsessive about about it. She's yeah. more like, like if I told her, hey, we're gonna work out at five o'clock. Like if I don't say, okay, it's five, let's go. She's just gonna be like, oh, okay, I'm off playing soccer. Or I'm off doing something else. So it's yeah. Her mind goes a mile a minute. So she, for her right now, 
soccer is like outside of school, that's like number one. Okay. It's funny too, because Xander wants the abs and biceps. So <laughs> it's a guy thing. Right? It, yeah, it's a guy thing. And, and I think the, the reason, because he knows that his training is to make him a better football um, player. Because you taught and him that? How does he know? Because I taught him that, okay. that his training makes him a better football player. Yeah, like how like most kids wouldn't know intuitively like lifting weights is for football. A lot of them might be mm -hmm. like, I'm lifting weights to get my abs okay. and biceps because girls. Yeah. yeah, no, I taught him that. I taught him you're going to do your weight training not in the way or the sport that I do. And that was that that's kind of a conversation that we had a long time ago. Um, you know, weight training serves a lot of purposes. And for me, that's bodybuilding and now powerlifting. For you, that's football. And so, you know, basically I taught him that we need to do your your weight training so that you can excel in this sport. Um, now that being said, he wants biceps. Our bicep curls having biceps really, really necessary for football? No. But at the same time, you know, in his mind, big biceps are a sign of strength. You know, it's kind of like your badge yeah. of being yeah. strong. You know, everybody uh, sees biceps. They don't see me, you know, deadlift 250, 300 pounds, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you, Brad. <laughs> I'm going to challenge you because if he's carrying the football and he's got bulging biceps, he's going to have a better <laughs> grip on that ball. It's going to be a tighter <laughs> fit up in there. Open his exactly. <laughs> it's like a, it's well, like a vice, vice grip yeah. that ball. So, and, and I, I, I could put up a bit of an argument to that, but the best argument that I've got is that he is not carrying the football. <laughs> he's, pu he's pushing people to the ground. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, well, yeah, and okay, then so now that being said, I let him do curls. I let him do curls because again, you know what? If he wants to put the workout to have an aesthetic looking bicep, I'm okay with it. Go ahead, bud. You know, and I'll teach you the smartest way to do that. Now, is he, uh, I'm assuming, because it wouldn't be safe, I don't think. I'm assuming that his Reno Football League doesn't weight train all of them together or give them assignments for at home, right? That's something that you do extra. Correct. Did he ask you to do that? Um, did he ask me to do that? Boy, that's a good question. I don't know if he's got his headphones over there or not. Um, or were you like, Hey, you should totally do this because I know how and, and you want to be good. You know, I, he's just always weight trained. I mean, he actually started lifting weights before he started playing football, you know? Um, and so I think it was probably just an evolution you know, he's just always lifted weights. And now it was kind of like, well, if we're serious about football, we should make your time spent where you're lifting weights probably help you excel in football and not just for fun or bodybuilding or powerlifting, etc. So, yeah, I don't really I can't really answer that. I don't really know how that evolved, to be honest with you. But all I know is that, yeah, he started lifting weights before, you know, he started playing football. And, and then somewhere that kind of just meshed. Okay. And I will say that he's way ahead of the game because now that he's in high school and he's playing on a JV team. Yes, they do train together. Um, it's very, very unorganized. And it's just shit writing on a whiteboard in their <laughs> gym. But. Nonetheless, uh, they, 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 they lift weights together. You know, they, they lift together as a team. Xander's way ahead of the game. You know, he's way ahead of the game. So I think he's pretty thankful for that, actually. Okay. Um, do, do, you were just telling me before we started that you did his program? Yeah. You just, like, Very restructured his pro your what? I'm very proud of that, by the way. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I mean, I've it, it, watching him in in football has made me kind of a has made me a better coach. It's expanded my my coaching ability, I'll say. Um, 
and I'm going to, I don't want to elaborate too much because I've got a really good blog that I'm working on that's going to be on the 3D Muscle Journey website under education and blog. <laughs> okay. It won't be linkable uh, yet I'm, when this comes out, but we'll look out for yeah. it in February. But I'm working really hard on it. And, um, and yeah, it's at least right now, it looks very, very bitching. And <laughs> it <should> basically, be. <laughs> it's there every time, Fred. <laughs> we That's have groovy. to know, it's groovy. We, yeah right on <laughs> but we have to know that we're bodybuilding and we're powerlifting coaches right and so we have to kind of know our niche and we have to stay in our lane and i know that for him to excel in his sport my level of knowledge in his sport is not good enough and so you know at some point i had to outsource and take him to somebody that's you know, more knowledgeable in speed and athleticism and how to develop that, et cetera, et cetera. So I had a great learning experience last year, and we're going to continue to do that. But what I've done is I've taken what we know uh, and all the principles that we know, and I've melded it uh, into, you know, what I learned from his speed coach last year. And I've basically made like a year round macro cycle of training um, that's going to be in that blog that could essentially serve him for the next four years. For It's like a repeat of the year for sophomore. And then, so it's like four years of training that he's going to be able to do. And the real test is obviously going to be now that I've put all this thing together, um, how much does he improve this year as opposed to last year? Because for the last three years, he's been a very dominant football player. Mm-hmm. And so now it's kind of one of those things where how do you make somebody that's already good even better? And so, of course, that's the whole intent of this plan that I'm putting together, this macro cycle of training, which we're going to repeat over and over again. But does it work? You know, I mean, our plan is to run this thing every year. It's a year of training that we're going to do every year, every year. But we got to kind of find out first and foremost, right off the bat, did it work? Mm-hmm. Um I mean, football's a physical sport, you know, you, you can't just be fast, you know, you got to be fast and you got to be strong and you can't just be strong. You got to be durable, you know, and there's contact involved. And so you have to take all that into consideration when you're talking about a, uh, you know, training for a specific sport. And so that's kind of everything that I'm taking into, into consideration here. Awesome. Does, uh, does Carolina have a program, Jeff, or if she just was worked out with you once and that's all you Worked out once. That's it. Okay. Yeah. I haven't sat down to like really organize or structure it. Um, Cause I want to first, I just want to see how serious she actually is. Yeah. Cause it's, let's see if she comes back says, when are we going to work out again? If she does that, then I'm like, okay, let's write something up. Um, but that one workout though, knowing that she had soccer practice the next day, I'm like, we're not squatting. We're not deadlifting. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't want to get you sore. So you can't run. So I just did a like seated cable row and an overhead press and just super lightweight and just try to teach her form and technique. Mm-hmm. That was it. Um, and, you know, trying to just basically I was coaching her more during that session than I was actually. It wasn't about, hey, here's how you do an overhead press. It was a lot of like talking and communicating. Yeah. The whys and things. Um, but we'll see. I want to see how, how committed she is if she comes back from for more. I don't want to force it on her. If she's like, if she wants to do it, she'll tell me. And when she does tell me, then I'll actually write something up. I'll structure it. Yeah. And that's very, that's yeah, two I, very different ways of looking at it, right? Because Brad's like, I know what he's going to do the next four years. And you're like, I'll see if she comes back for a workout too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, because <laughs> yeah. some and people, that's, and that, and that's, like, does Xander feel pressured now for the next four years? And do you worry about that? Like perfect question, because I was just going to kind of elaborate <laughs> on that, because, I mean, first of all, we have to kind of understand that it's not like it's not like this is something that just boom happened. It's It's been this evolution of yeah. what he likes to do, um, what I've learned through his speed coach, you know, and this melding of kind of this whole program together. And it's been a, a long process that's evolved. But two things that to kind of answer your question, first of all, no, he's not pressured to do it. He wants to do it. Mm-hmm. He's just like any other athlete. Some days he wants to do his training. Other days he doesn't want to do his training. We have to have the discipline to recognize that, you know what, ultimately shit's got to get done. And even if I don't feel like I got to, you know, I don't feel like doing it, I got to get it done. 
And I don't even have to force him in there. He'll go back there and he'll do it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the cool thing. And, and, and hopefully Carolina can appreciate this at some point too, you know, when, when, when you're doing her training, Jeff, is that my son doesn't have to question if this is going to work. He knows it's going to work. How many times do our athletes, they, they doubt themselves? Is this working? Is this optimal? Is mm -hmm. this, you know, is this maximizing my time? He doesn't have to worry about any of that yeah. because he sees what I can do. I didn't just up and magically squat 450 pounds one day. I had to work at it. I had to do the same things that he's doing now. He sees Jeff and then he sees Alberto and he sees these shredded guys, you know, that are in incredible shape. They're doing, you know, he's doing the same thing that they've done for years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. So he, he's got incentive. He's, he's going to make himself do it really whether he wants to or not. I don't even have to pressure him because he knows it's working. He knows that every rep, every time he grabs the bar, every time he gets underneath it, it's going towards ultimately what he wants, and he doesn't have to doubt it. No. I think, yeah, yeah. I think Brad, like Xander and Carolina are in totally different spots as yeah. far as like Xander's in they are. football They're similar. for years. But Karen, like there's like there's a lot of other dynamic that's you know, it's not just, hey, I'm going to write out a program for her and like I gotta think about okay, you know, the situation, the dynamic with, you know, her mom and dad, like she stays a week at our house, a week over at her dad's house. How's a program gonna work with that? It's not every other week. Mm -hmm. I also have another kid to worry about. He's starting soccer mm -hmm. too. I have my training as well. And you know, not that I'm the priority, but it is training for me is part of my job right. um, as a coach and as a as a pro bodybuilder so like and then of course you know my wife's a teacher she's got all her things so there's like all these dynamics so i'm like okay this is going to be one more thing on carolina's plate one more thing on the whole family's plate so to me it's like okay where is it i haven't even really thought about it till like right now where is this going to fall on the priority order you know mm -hmm. and well, to me it's like but to me it's like carly okay you got the structure here at home you're trying to, to to fall into, you know, cleaning your room and doing your homework. And so you have this routine and regimen. Now I'm going to throw this training program that you, if I, if I write it up, then it's like, okay, it almost like says you, okay, you should be doing this or have to do it. I don't want to put extra pressure on it. That's why I said, let me wait until she comes to me yeah. and says, I yeah. really want to do this. Then and right now, anyway, it's like, I don't even care if I wrote a program for her or not. That's more about teaching her how to exercise right now. Yeah, yeah, like in a safe, how intelligent that, like, manner. How to yeah. do a squat. I don't need a program. Yeah. I just need to just teach her these lifts. That's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. um, just to, like when she was doing her overhead presses, I know the, the people who are listening can't see it, but she was with dumbbells. We we're doing an overhead press with dumbbells. And it was just like all the, like spaghetti arms. It was all over the place. So, <laughs> so our neural patterns, you still need to learn all that. Yeah. So to me, it's like I yeah. don't need to write out these, these blocks of training yet. We're not even at that point yet. Yeah. Yeah. Because Xander, really Carolina right now is kind of where Xander was probably about four or five years ago, you know, really, to be honest with you. And did I write Xander a program four or five years ago? No. I just let him go kind of hog wild in the gym, you know. Mm -hmm. He wanted to deadlift, go deadlift. You know, he wanted to play with the row machine and the pull down. Go, just do it. They don't even have to have a program at that point. I mean, just yeah. like like Jeff said, just noodling these these dumbbells around, she's going to get the neural patterns and she's going to get the the technique down. She's going to get stronger and get growth from that just by doing it, you know. So yeah, even though Xander and and Carolina are actually pretty similar in age, I want to say they're only what Jeff about a year, maybe Three. fourteen months apart. Three years. Xander's Xander's fifteen. Xander just turned fifteen, and doesn't Carolina turn fourteen pretty soon? In July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're not that far apart, but yet as, as an athlete, they couldn't be more different, you know, just on timeline, Xander's a different sport than Carolina. Carolina's a girl. Xander's a guy, you know, don't they, do that, different. Brad. Uh, don't do, don't that, do Brad. that, Brad. Oh, think about the social <laughs> pressure. You know what I mean? Cause you're talking Carolina to someone who started lot. training four hours a day when she was like seven years old. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Training wise. Yeah. yeah that, that's, that's going to be very similar, but what they want is very, very different. You know, yeah. what they want to get from their training is very, very different. 
I remember watching Xander. I mean, we'll go to up when Brad had his gym. We go train, and, and Xander would just be all over the place, you know, doing all these. Like Brad was saying, just like you see him deadlifting, and you see him doing pulling on something, and it's just like <laughs> yeah. he's just there having fun, you know. Yeah. Nothing serious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, not was, wanted, so. yeah. And it's not like he was over there lifting heavy, heavy. It was just like these light things he was doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny too. Like any, I guess, because um, no, I don't have children. That said, I've coached a lot of children. Um, in mm-hmm. that's how for like a decade that was my beginning in the I guess the sports and fitness industry, right? These competitive gymnasts, hours and hours a day, right? And the one of the the biggest uh, pressures and problems when when you're on a competitive gymnastics team, which is very different than classes, you know, it's twenty hours a week kind of thing, and it was when the kids intent didn't match the parents for whatever reason right so Mm -hmm. this parent did gymnastics when they were little and therefore their daughter should do this and we're spending all this money and um we take you to these competitions and and like my um man if, if that wasn't driving, like if a kid wanted to be there and get better, but their parents couldn't get their shit together and give them to practice on time or would have them miss days all the time. Or like you said, like if they have a stepdad who doesn't take them in a real dad that does or, you know what I mean? So there was always that. And then, and then when you, I guess as a listener listening to Xander and Brad and, and how the whole family is in it. Right. And I remember growing up when I was, um, having thoughts of not being in gymnastics anymore. It was a lot of pressure. Uh, my family did not have a lot of money, and that is a very expensive sport. And my parents and brother gave up a whole lot to get me to my competitions. You know, my tuition was hundreds of dollars a month. Like, it was... I remember in my head being like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, but the whole family's in it, and we've been doing it for years, and, like... Am I letting everyone yeah. down? And, um, mm-hmm. you know, so, and I, I worry when I go to like Gold's Gym and I see these dads yelling at their like 13 year old boys and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like these poor kids. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's but true. at the same time, you can't be too judgmental because Xander knows it, it's, it, it's, it's up to the parent, in my opinion to relieve that kid of that pressure. Right, but you know it's hard. I mean? Like, my parents I mean, never made me feel pressured. I felt exactly. it because I know that we didn't have money. And I yeah. know, you know what I mean? And, yeah. um, and, and Xander knows full well, and, and, and like I told you guys, you know, three, four years ago, if he yeah. doesn't want to do this anymore, son, don't. You know, I'm going to love you just the same. I'm not going to be judgmental, yeah. you know? It, that was kind of the 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 outset. You know, when he yeah. started getting more and more serious into football. And I really think that if you don't do that, you're only hurting the family dynamic as a whole. Yeah. Either you're a kid because like you are, you know, like you felt you're maybe you're a little bit pressured, you know, um, maybe, you know, the, 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 the rest of the family that's not participating, maybe they're going to have missed that, you know, you, you can't, you have to be up for an honest from the very, very get go. Yeah. You know, if we're going to take this serious, we have to know that we can pull out at any given time, yeah. you know, there's life after that. And, um, yeah, I, I just, I think you're hurting the family dynamic and, and, and ultimately the kid in the long run, if you're not open and honest right off the bat. Yeah. So, I mean, that kid that's in there with that, with the, with the dad that's 13 years old, maybe they've already had that talk. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying I'm not, uh, being judgmental towards your relationship with Xander. It's just, I'm thinking like of our listeners, a lot of them are fitness professionals. Right, because a yeah. lot of times, if you care enough to listen to a bodybuilding podcast for you know every week or whatever, you either are very you're probably either an athlete or a personal trainer or a coach on your own, or you own a gym or whatever. And what is that like for your child? And what because mm-hmm. you know what's funny too is being in competitive gymnastics so long. Um, kids go to school and then we train at night, right? And I am very close to a lot of, or was very close to a lot of gym owners. And if they are the coach of this team, so that means that 
Um, oh, and it's usually girls because, like, um, the kid grows up in the gym like Xander did. And then when they're old enough, they're, so they probably have good um, motor development. So when they're old enough, they start taking classes and their mom's the owner. So when they get good enough, okay, now your mom is your coach. And so when you want to quit gymnastics or you don't want to be in gymnastics anymore, your mom is still busy from 5 to 8 every night or 5 to 9 every night. What if you decide you want to play basketball? Now mom can't ever go to your basketball games. And now mm. it's about all these other girls and not you, you know? Um, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so a lot of uh, gym owners' children that I knew had really interesting, um, once once they quit, like in their high school years usually, had very interesting relationships with their parents because their parents care about these other 20 girls every night for four hours, you know? And so there's that pressure. And then I wonder too, like, um, I'm trying to think if I'm a teenage boy and my dad is super jacked. And I really like chess <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Like, is that, uh-huh. is that hard on, on a kid? And, um, I don't know. And then like Carolina may, it, I don't know she's really thin and athletic, but like if, um, like, you know, she sees Jeff dieting and feels like guilty for eating her cake after dinner or something. But then again, I don't she's have. The, she's the opposite. She's like, "Hey, I'm eating cake." You know? <laughs> she throws it in your face. But yeah, I just, she does. She's she's like, I I don't want to diet. She'll straight up, just like her mom. But I don't diet. but Carolina's a thin, active little girl. Like, what if she wasn't? True. You know, yeah. like I remember the first year after gymnastics when I grew boobs and butt, and I was like, "What? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> like, what is this? And why? Why is flipping harder than it used to be?" And why is my true lady uniform getting tight? You know. Yeah. Like <laughs> you know, you know what's important for me as a as a dad and like because I know how how much time consuming bodybuilding can be. Yeah. You know, as a bodybuilder and as a coach, not only am I participating in the sport, I coach it too. So, right. but it's important for me to have that structure in my day. And we've talked about this on other podcasts of so how my day flows. Mm-hmm. That I have different hats I put on. So it's like, okay, from, from this time to this time, I'm here by myself coaching, and it's a job, and I knock it out and get it done. Okay, from this time on, I'm, a, I'm dad, or I'm a husband, and there's no, there's no coaching. Mm-hmm. There's no I, – I, I try to get my training done before they come home, but sometimes it doesn't happen. But it's usually like you know when my day ends as a, a coach and as a bodybuilder, it's 5 o'clock. So from five o'clock on to bedtime, I'm like any other working parent in America, you know, that works a nine to five. Mm -hmm. That time is devoted to the family. So I don't, I personally, I just don't like to interject or to break up my day where it's like, okay, I'm coaching now. I'm going to go do this or I'm going to cook. I, I just want that five, six, seven hour window. That's, that's me giving my attention to my family. Yeah. And I bet that'd be hard if if you had a different nine to five job, and had to get your training in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like it'd be hard to hide that, I guess, from a an old enough yeah. kid that like sees you weighing all your but stuff it, or doing cardio and you're tired or having mood swings or whatever. Yeah, like in the mornings, like this morning, actually, I got up at five. Ethan was up already. <laughs> He's like. <Okay>. Oh. <laughs> I do my cardio, like, in order for me to get cardio in, because I am prepping, it has to be first thing in the morning. So, as you guys can see, there's no more bike in the corner back here like there used to be. I brought it downstairs so I can spend more time with them. So, I'm pedaling while he's drinking his chocolate milk, watching Tom and Jerry. I'm sitting there pedaling, <laughs> watching Tom and Jerry with them. So, it's like, yeah, I mean, the body, they see it as just, it's, that's normal life. It's not like it's a weird thing or something like yeah. that. But I try to try to separate it as much as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. But if I have to intertwine it, then I, I do things like that. Let me let me make them a part of it, so it becomes like it's not this big, weird thing. It's just oh, that's normal. Dad's on a bike pedaling, <laughs> or dad's in the garage, you know, doing curls or yeah. something. It's like nor- it's a normal thing. It's not a weird thing. Yeah, and it's it's um, I guess in the fitness industry, like being a professional in the fitness industry, I think it is a little different than like. Again, if you're a professional basketball player, like every kid likes watching basketball and every kid understands how cool that is. 
but is it cool to watch dad bike in the corner and like, you know, like, um, not really. Yeah. yeah it's just, it's just different. Or like, okay, my dad is flexing and his speedos, you know, like, or like for powerlifting, my dad wears a leotard and whatever, you know? So just things, I, I, I wonder, um, I can't go back in time, but I wonder how that would have been growing up to have, because my mom used to run a little bit or something. My dad lifted weights sometimes while I was at school, but it was never, like, I was the athlete and I was raised by my coaches, basically. You know, I'd go to school during the day and gymnastics at night, go home, shower, homework, bed, and do it again over and over. Um, I think it, I, I could probably... I'll speak for for both me and Brad. I think it's the way in we in which we conduct how we do things. Yeah, bodybuilding could be perceived as a weird, selfish, obsessive sport, mm -hmm. uh, but we do it in a way where I mean, you can see that we're real and we tr we're positive, and I think it's the way we conduct ourselves that it doesn't come across as weird for our family. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you'll conduct it as a sport, not check me out in my underwear ad pictures because this sells my supplement company or like not that anything's wrong with that but i imagine that would be more weird if you were a fitness model versus a bodybuilding coach like if you were a dad fitness or shoot if i was a female like if i was a female fitness model with a young girl with a 12 year old child like i wouldn't know how to make sense of that for her mm -hmm. Going yeah so yeah. It kind of just kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier how it's just everything like when i Everything I do, I just know that it's not even with social media. It's just I can just go downstairs right now and just the way I walk through the room. Kids are observant. They're very yeah. observant. Mm -hmm. They they can they feed off energy. If I'm in a bad mood, that guarantee they're going to leave. Like I can tell that when I've gone into the room and I'm in a bad room, Ethan will pick up on it. He's only five. He can pick up on it. Mm -hmm. You just see it on his face. And you're like, oh, okay. You try to snap out of it. Okay, okay, let's not let's not be this way because you know they're seeing every little thing and like like brad was saying earlier they could mimic it or they could do like they could do opposite like for me personally like a lot of things that i see my parents did there were some things that i would mimic like okay those are but the negative things my personality is like if it's something negative i don't want to do that like i think it's just like you know my parents always said don't do drugs and do this whatever but I just my I always like drawn against like my parents smoked when I was a kid. I hated it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I never wanted to do it because I just thought it was it was gross. It was like I would smell it and it was just like they're doing it and yeah, it's not good for them. I knew it wasn't good for them, so I'm not gonna do that to myself. Yeah. So it's just like as a parent, I just know that everything I do, it's like I'm under a microscope. Yeah, and it's 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 I think that's very, very common for any people that are really, really close. Because I have a feeling that, Jeff, that's going to very much be a reversal of roles as Ethan gets older. Because right now, Xander can walk through the room and I can observe him <laughs> and know whether it's a bad day or it's a good day or if he's up or if he's down. You know what I mean? Oh, I, think I, know, just, I know that. There's, there's yeah, a closeness I, I, there that you, yeah. I'm, you almost really can't, you know, I, I you, you can't, I can't even describe that or even make a similarity that closeness with anybody else. You know what I mean? And um, in a way, I, I think it kind of, well, I don't know. I, I, I guess I won't go that, that into it. But nonetheless, when there's a closeness there, yeah, you, you, you can pick up on each other's vibrations and know, you know kind of what they're feeling. He can't get away from it. He, there's, <laughs> he, he, he came home today, and I could tell right off the bat that something was bugging him. I just asked him, I said, son, what's up? You know, he was mad because he's got three C's. So, <laughs> which is not bad. Uh, I just tell Carolina, I said, hey, I was, I was 13 going on 14 once too. So I know everything you do. And she mm. just laughs. I'm like, I was a teenager once. So, minus yeah, the internet. I, minus the internet. Changes things. Yeah. True. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, that's me. All right. Do y'all have a, Anything, any parting pieces of advice for people who are trying to juggle being an athlete and a coach and or and a parent? Mm, yeah. Okay, yeah. Brad, yeah, you, yeah, first. You, you You got the gears turning too, Jeff. <laughs> I was just going to um, say, 
I was just going to say, mine's going to be really brief, really quick. Okay, go. Go there. Uh, yeah, priorities, go. Mine might be long. Priorities. Be a parent first. You do that, everything else will fall in line. Boom, shakalaka. Okay. Yeah, and if you set a good example for your kid, everything else is going to fall in line, which is being a good parent first. You know, yeah. think, of, think, of, think of setting a good example. And it's not just your kid. It's usually your kid's friends and everybody yeah. that they interact with, you know. Um, yeah, be a good parent first. And then, you know, outside of that, I, I want to kind of touch on something that Jeff just said about evolving. You know, the bike doesn't sit back there in the corner of his office anymore. It's, it's down in the, uh, in the living room, you know. Um, don't get too set in your ways because, I mean, kids grow up and things change dramatically. You know, they really, really change dramatically. And so I think a little bit of kind of going with the flow should be a little bit in place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Jeff and I were both parents. Jeff and I are a lot alike. Um, we, we do have our, our stark differences. And one of that is one of those is that Jeff likes and craves structure more so than I do. And even though we do things differently, you know, he, he very much likes to have the nine to five and then the evening is, is family time for us, the way that we've kind of grown up, we accomplish the same thing, but in a different way, you know, Xander's grown up in this, this lifestyle, his, his whole life. And so I don't think there's really anything wrong with those things melding and still having family time. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong. I know down the street here, one this this friend of mine, his best years were when him and his kid were kind of lifting together, you know, and they would either go out in the garage or they would come down to the to the gym that I owned. And so I think, you know, with with us, sometimes it's kind of like Xander's in there playing his his Xbox and I'm working on client work right there in the same room. And so there's a, a very much a joining of, you know, the the coaching and the family life together, you know? Um, and I, 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 I kind of relish that. It's like how many parents get to do their job in this loving environment with their kid kind of right there, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and Jeff, one thing I was, I, I, I want to kind of clue you into is Xander hears me make these coaching videos <laughs> and I think they're a positive influence. I really do. I really feel like, he's a better person because of these coaching videos that hears, he hears me make, you know, over and over and over again. And, um, I think it kind of all in all, it kind of makes me just a little bit better, you know, at, at not only coaching, but then being a parent and maybe vice versa. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Okay. Cause otherwise I'll keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for handling my interrogation. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, see cool. you next week. Thanks so much for listening, guys. 3DMJ prides itself on keeping this show, our blog, and our YouTube channel as free and relevant sources of information for our community week after week. We also release additional free video courses as often as possible at 3DMJVault.com. If you'd like to help support our mission and our work, please consider becoming a monthly patron of our endeavors go to patreon.com slash team 3DMJ and donate as little as $1 per month to our cause of helping educate and grow the drug-free bodybuilding and powerlifting communities worldwide. You can definitely choose to donate more, and if you do so, we'll send you discount codes for future use on any of our paid products. But any little bit helps, and we appreciate your monthly support in any amount that you see fit. So again, you can start assisting the team at patreon.com slash team 3dmj that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash team 3dmj thanks for sticking around and we'll see you in the next show